Chapter 5. Receiving Medical Assistance Are you Clarencio's ward? The question came from a young man with a unique and kind face. He was carrying a large bag, the kind used for medical implements, and addressed me with a welcoming smile. When I nodded, he relaxed and introduced himself. I'm Lysias, your brother. My supervisor, Assistant Henrique de Luna, has assigned me to serve you as long as you need treatment. Are you a sort of nurse then? I inquired. I'm a visiting attendant from Health Services. As such, I not only help with nursing, but I also alert doctors whenever their help is needed to attend to the needs of newly arrived patients. Noting my surprise, he explained, There are many workers who serve in my capacity in Nasolar. You're a newcomer to the colony, so of course you're still unaware of the extent of our activities. Just to give you an idea, I would inform you that there are over 1,000 ailing spirits in this section alone, and this is one of the smallest buildings in our hospital complex. Everything is so marvelous, I exclaimed, guessing that my observations might soon degenerate into spontaneous praise. Lysias rose from his chair and carefully began his examination, thereby keeping me from expressing my gratitude. Your intestinal area displays serious lesions and obvious vestiges of cancer. Your liver has a rupture, and your kidneys show characteristic signs of premature failure. Smiling kindly, he added, Does my brother know what all of this means? Yes, I answered. The doctor explained it yesterday and made it clear that those disturbances are all of my own doing. Noting my obvious embarrassment at this reticent confession, he hastily consoled me. I have a group of 80 patients under my daily care, and 57 are in the same condition as you. Perhaps you haven't realized that there are even mutilated patients. Have you ever thought about that? Did you know that imprudent persons who wasted their sight on evil arrive here without eyes? that criminals who use the gift of agility during criminal acts come to us paralyzed, if not completely legless, and that those who were obsessed with sexual aberrations usually arrive completely insane? Noticing my natural perplexity, he proceeded, Nosolar is not a settlement of victorious spirits in the normal sense of the word. We are happy because we have work to do and there is joy in every corner of our colony, for the Lord has not deprived us of the blessed bread of service. Availing myself of a long pause, I exclaimed excitedly, Go on, my friend, explain it to me. I feel so peaceful and relieved. Isn't this a heavenly region for the elect? Lysias smiled and explained, Remember the old teaching, Many are called, but few are chosen. He gazed at the distant horizon as though trying to recall experiences stored in his innermost memories and added, Many religions on the planet invite individuals to the heavenly banquet. No one who has once come close to the notion of God can in good conscience deny that fact. The number of those who have been called is uncountable, my friend, but where are those who have answered the call? With few exceptions, the human masses prefer to accept a different invitation instead. They waste their potential by deviating from the path of the good. They cave into their whims and thoughtlessly destroy their physical bodies. The result, thousands of individuals are taken daily from the physical realm in a painful state of confusion. Countless multitudes of insane, diseased, and ignorant spirits wander around in all directions in the circles closest to the earth's crust. Seeing my astonishment, he asked, Did you by any chance believe that the death of the body would bring us to the plains of miracles? We are compelled to work hard at different jobs, but that isn't enough. Regardless of our spiritual evolution, if we have debts on the planet, we must inevitably go back and set them right. We must wash our face in the sweat of the world and break the chains of hatred, replacing them with the sacred bonds of love. It wouldn't be just to impose on others the task of clearing the field where we ourselves have sown thorns. Shaking his head, 
he added, It's a case of many are called, my dear friend. The Lord forgets no one, yet people rarely remember him. Embarrassed at recalling my own wrongs in light of such great notions of individual responsibility, I confessed how depraved I was. Before I could add further exclamations, my visitor put his right hand on my lips. Hush. Let's concentrate on the work to be done. One must know how to sincerely repent in order to start anew. Then he carefully applied magnetic passes to me. While treating my intestinal area, he explained, Are you observing my specialized treatment of the cancerous area? Pay attention. All honest medicine is a service of love, a truly helpful activity. But the actual work of healing is up to each spirit individually. My brother, you'll be treated kindly, and you'll feel as strong as you did in the most beautiful days of your earthly youth. You'll work hard, and I believe you'll become one of the best co-workers in Nasolar. Nevertheless, the cause of your infirmities will stay with you until you have eliminated all the bad seeds that have corrupted your divine health, and which you have accumulated within your subtle body through your moral indiscretions and your desire to enjoy yourself more than others. The earthly flesh that we abuse is also a blessed field where we can enjoy the fruitful results of complete healing if we do what we must. I meditated on these concepts. I pondered the divine goodness, and feeling overwhelmingly sentimental, I wept copiously. Lysias, however, calmly finished the day's treatment and said, When tears aren't caused by feelings of rebellion... They are always a purifying medicine. So weep, my friend, unburden your heart, and let us bless those well-deserving microscopic organizations, the cells of the earthly flesh. They are so humble and so precious, so degraded, and yet so sublime for the spirit of service. They offer us a temple for rectification, but without them... How many thousands of years would we spend in ignorance? Having said that, Lysias tenderly stroked my brow and took his leave with a gesture of love.